How's it going, everybody? Now, for my trip to Convex 2019, MSI gave me their P65, which is a great laptop for editing on the go, plus it looks beautiful. However, at Convex 2019, they unveiled the new P65 and more importantly, the P75, which is the new larger model of their Creator Prestige editions. So currently I do have the new P75 and I'm going to compare it somewhat to the P65, the smaller and the previous version. We're going to take a look at the differences and see how they perform. Now they do differ in models and specs and all of that, so it's mostly going to be a CPU comparisons and the body differences. Now taking a look at the hardware comparison at first, the P75 comes out with two main variants. The one I have here has the 8 core 16 thread i9-9880H that boosts up to 4.5 GHz on all 8 cores. It has 32 gigs of DDR4 memory running at 2666 MHz. It has a super fast 1 terabyte NVMe M.2 SSD, an RTX 2070 Max Q, and then finally a 1080p 60 Hz IPS display. All of that is inside a body that's only 19 millimeters thick and weighs only 2.25 kilograms. So taking on the go is going to be a dream. Even though MSI get most of the styling of the creator range, they did revamp these latest models somewhat. Firstly, you do have a darker silver finish, which I do kind of prefer, a new hinge design, a larger trackpad, a different keyboard, and a few other cosmetic changes here and there. The body is made out of a mixture of aluminum and a plastic, which does have some flex, but it's still a premium and keeps the weight down to that 2.25 kilograms. The P75 is also a, not a fingerprint magnet, which weirdly enough is a plus on laptops these days. It's kind of a standout feature almost. As for the P75's keyboard, you get a full-size white-only backlit keyboard that does not feel mechanical, but it does have a nice soft press, a short travel distance, and it is pretty silent. Compared to the previous model, you do have more tactile switches and you do have a much better lighting. Definitely a upgrade compared to the previous model. As for the trackpad, MSI upped the size, making it much wider that honestly made it feel a lot better. It also feels a bit smoother, it has a fingerprint reader in the top corner and you still get your tactile buttons underneath the pad which does feel a bit softer. The P75's trackpad is definitely one of the better trackpads that I've seen. Uh, sometimes companies struggle to get a good trackpad but MSI have done it again with their P75. As for the display, you either get a 1080p or 4K IPS 17.3 inch 60Hz display. Now you might have wanted something a bit more than 60Hz, but currently there aren't that many 140Hz or 120Hz panels in 17.3 inches, so that's unfortunately where we are at the moment, and it is more of a creator's laptop, more production, where you don't really need that much higher refresh rate for your productivity. As for the bezels, they are nice and thin, and even though they are so thin, you don't really get much screen flex, which is nice. For the color, however, the P65 is a quite good, calibrated with MSI's true color, which gives it 100% of the sRGB and 72% of the NTSC color gamut. Now, it's not the highest grade for color accuracy, but it's still good enough for pretty much everything that most of us do. And if you do want better, then just get an external display, which will be anyway recommended. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't open up the system to show you guys the inside but MSI's Cooler Boost Trinity system does do a good job at keeping the temps in check. 
As for the air intakes, they're located underneath and on top of the laptop, and then the exhausts are located behind and on the sides. As for the fan speed, they range between 2,500 RPM on a single fan when on idle and ramped up to a max of 6,000 RPM on all fans. The fan noise was actually not too bad. It's still loud. You don't want to use it like that in a very crowded area, but Here's just a quick sound comparison. All right, so for the fan noise, we have on high performance, currently on idle 2700 RPM. We're gonna crack that up to cooler boost. So this is also how it sounds with me talking in the background, so you guys can just hear how loud it actually is. Now, as for how the cooling performed using Ida64, I did see that the CPU jumped up into the mid 90s at 4.4 gigahertz. It started to underclock then going down to 3.3 gigahertz and range around at the mid 80s. At this time the GPU wasn't running at all and it went up from 40 degrees up to 55 degrees. But now as for benchmarking the CPU and GPU, again I did see that the CPU jumped into the mid 90s and then underclocked to around 2.7, 2.8 gigahertz. And for temperatures it ranged around the mid 70s to 80s while the GPU ranged around the 70 degrees. Now, of course, it did lower quite a bit more the clock speeds because the cooling needed to keep up with both the CPU and GPU. Then moving to I.O. on the left side, you get the power AC in, a gigabit Ethernet port, a single USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A port, a micro SD card reader, which I'm still not a fan of, and then a pair of headphone and microphone jacks. Moving to the right, you get a Kensington lock, a full size HDMI 2.0 port, a Thunderbolt 3 port, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A ports, and a USB 3.2 Gen 1 type C port. Now as for the webcam, you get a 720p 30fps top mounted webcam that the quality is okay, same goes with the microphone. Of course, you're not going to stream on it, you're going to have a dedicated thing for that. Uh, but for Skype calls here and there, it's going to be fine. Uh, it's for most laptops these days, you get a really basic webcam. Speakers wise, you get two 2 watt bottom facing speakers that delivers pretty good sound or quality. It's decently loud and clarity was on point. It was however lacking a bass with the exclusion of a sub, so that's understandable. Honestly, I would have liked it was a bit more bassy, but it's definitely good enough for listening to music or watching movies in the background and playing any non-competitive games. Now getting into our uh, benchmarks, I couldn't fully compare the P75 against the P65 because it used a GTX 1060. So rather I compared the P75 to some desktops that I had and also some other laptops that I've reviewed so far. But as for gaming benchmarks, firstly, I performed all of the benchmarks at native 1080p and on the max graphic presets. So it was only pretty much Metro Exodus that couldn't get over the 60 FPS a mark, but it was also running on the extreme benchmark settings, which are quite hectic. But most of the other games pretty much reached over the 100 FPS a mark. As for ray tracing, honestly, it's still not really worth it because you're losing almost half your frames. And then by enabling DLSS, you are getting some back, but it looks awfully blurry. So currently at the moment for games, I still don't feel it's worth it. But if you want to use it for production work, then that might actually still be useful. I just don't currently have those type of applications with me. For the next benchmarks, I compare the P75 to a desktop with an i7-8700K running at 5 gigahertz and an MSI Armor RTX 2070. I also compare it against the only other laptop that I've reviewed so far with an RTX 2070, which is the Aorus 15 with an i7-8750. H, but this one is somewhat bigger and it uses a non-max Q2070 so we'll see the difference between a desktop, a non-max Q GPU and a max Q2070. So from the results the P75 does fall behind in the graphics department somewhat but definitely makes up for it in the CPU benchmarks. 
the max q2070 with the uh, lowered clock speeds because of the smaller size looks to be around 10 percent slower than the non max q equivalent and of course the desktop is a faster than both but now as for the non gaming benchmarks this is where that eight cores and 16 threads certainly comes in handy scoring almost double the Cinebench score compared to the previous P65 with its i7-8750H and then in Realbench it compared really well with the overclock desktop CPUs. Then for the Blender Classroom benchmark, the 9880H running at 3.3 gigahertz for most of the benchmark completed it in 16 minutes and 48 seconds then finally for a battery life you get an 82 watt hour live polymer battery that gave me around six hours and 10 minutes on casual use and one hour and 33 minutes on gaming which was also on power saving mode then just for the power adapter you get a nice slim 230 watt brick that can easily fit into your bag so that's pretty much it for my review of MSI's new P75 Creator. Definitely a laptop that you need to go for if you're looking for something a bit more sleek but still delivers all of the needed performance, especially if you are a content creator. Whether it's video editing, photo editing, or even rendering work, this laptop is going to handle everything you throw at it. So then if you guys want to get one of these for yourself, I will leave links in the video description. Also a big thanks to MSI South Africa for sending the laptop over for a review. And if you guys like this video, please like, share, subscribe and comment like always. And then we'll check all of you guys next time. Cheers guys.